Hey guys, it's Syndicate here, and today I'm going to be giving you a full tutorial on how to complete the achievement Pop Goes the Weasel on Mob of the Dead. Now, there's a few things you're going to need to be able to know how to do first of all. One is obtain the Hell's Retriever, and secondly, know how to build the plane. Now, if you don't know how to do both of these things, then either click the links in the description if you're on mobile, or click the annotations on screen to go and watch them videos. Once you've watched them, return to this video to complete Pop Goes the Weasel. Okay, so once you've got your team together, you've got a load of points, you've got all the parts built for the plane, you're going to want to build the plane and fly there a total of three times and fully refuel the plane. The plane has to be refueled for the fourth journey for someone in afterlife mode to actually fly the plane to complete the easter egg. But once you've got your tomahawks and you've got your weaponry and you're already in set to go, you're going to want to throw your tomahawk at that poster, which triggers the easter egg to kind of basically begin. Now we've got our three plane rides out the way, we're kind of set and ready to go. So what we're going to want to do is drop down into afterlife mode and sneak behind the actual poster that we just like destroyed with a tomahawk. So when we walk into this little secret passageway, we're going to see a spoon. Now, we're going to see the spoon and you're going to zap it until you hear the laughter and the spoon disappear. This is triggered to say the next step is ready. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go and activate our skulls. Now, these five skulls hidden around the map and this is why the Hell's Retriever is so important. Now, it's impossible to do it without the Hell's Retriever because you're going to see for the following reasons. What you want to going to do is go to these five locations that I do go to and visit and throw my Retriever at it. Now, when I throw the Retriever, you see a blue skull is returned when I retrieve the Retriever. So we're going to retrieve these five skulls from these five different locations, which will, in the end, give us our free Blundergat. Once we retrieve these five skulls and obtain our free Blundergat, we're going to want to Acid Kit the Blundergat and also pack a punch it. Now, I'll say this later on, but you can get do this in any particular order, like Acid Gat it, pack a punch it. It depends whichever order you want to do it in, but we just need to get the Viltrolic Withering. Okay, so after getting all five, you'll hear a demonic laugh. Once we hear this, we just head to the Warden's office, and here you can see we get our free Blundergat. Now, this is a method to be able to get two Blundergats, because one person can get it from the box already, and then a second person could obtain it through the Warden's office. You could go about all four people getting it from being in afterlife mode, but that's another video for another day. Okay, so once we got our Acid Gat, we're going to head over to Pack a Punch It and get our Viltrolic Withering. But don't worry if you haven't Acid Gatted your weapon, because you can do it in any particular order. So, for example, you could get the Blundergat, then Acid Gat it to turn it into the Acid Gat, and then go and pack a punch that weapon to turn it into the Viltrolic Withering. Vice versa, you could just pack a punch the Blundergat into the Sweeper, then add the Acid Gat to get the Viltrolic Withering. So, once we've done that, we're going to return to the island and we're going to head down to the Citadel Tunnels, where the numbers that were initially just stable are now flickering. So, we've now got to input several different numbers, but once we've got that done, we'll trigger. Probably one of the coolest Easter eggs in Mob of the Dead. Kind of takes me back to some Ascension sort of feel. But you're going to enter 101 to complete the first set of numbers. And once you do that, you'll see the numbers flicker. And then we begin to enter our next set of numbers, which is 872. Once we've done 872, we're then going to go on to 386. Then we just let the numbers rotate again until we enter the next number. So this is going to be the final number that we're going to enter before it just gets really, really cool. So we're going to enter 4, 8, 1, and then we just return to our body and then begins our audio tour of Alcatraz. Now this is really cool because it gives us a story and a background of our characters and what exactly has been going on. And it's just really cool to hear the audio logs. It's something that we've always been looking for in all the maps of like hidden Easter eggs. And this is a really cool way of doing it. Now, something cool, because I've actually been to Alcatraz myself in real life, that this is, I think, kind of like based off the whole tour that you actually get when you're at Alcatraz because they give you a headset, you know, you walk along and as you walk to certain locations, by you get to certain points, if you walk quickly enough, you actually, you know, will hear like, oh, this is where such a person did this or such a person did that. And that's kind of what this exactly does, which is really cool because Treyarch really did incorporate so much from the island and, you know, just going to Alcatraz as a visit and then being able to do a guided tour of Alcatraz in zombies as well is just really, really cool. But regardless, we're going to move on to our next step now, which is requiring one person to drop down into afterlife mode. Now, have your teammates waiting up near the plane, fighting off the zombies above you, and you're going to run up to the plane and hold X to start the sequence. This is why I said the plane needs to be fully fueled up and ready to go, because when this character now runs up to get in the plane, it forces all the other teammates to down themselves. Don't worry, you don't lose all your stuff, you'll just see your other teammates appear next to you on the plane, as you'll see in a second, because this is the next sequence in the easter egg. Now, I believe there to be two different endings to how you can complete this easter egg, but for Pop Goes the Weasel, we're going to kill 
the weasel. So get ready for the game to end. I know it sounds very strange and we've never had it before in a game of zombies, but we do actually experience like a biblical ending. And what I mean by a biblical ending is that in custom zombies on PC, the endings had like Bible endings where you could pay a certain amount and or complete some challenges and the game would just end and it'd be like, congratulations, you completed it by this time. So people could suggestively do speed runs of this and try and complete it as quickly as they can, which hopefully I would like to do in the future. But once you land on the bridge, you're going to go and resurrect your body. And once you resurrect your body, you're going to have to fight off two versions of Brutus. They're going to come running at you like a badass, but they're pretty easy to take out. And then the weirdest thing you just don't expect happens. A kill sign appears above one of your teammates' head. Now, pop goes the weasel. We have to pop the weasel. We're going to have to kill him. Now, I was messing about using loads of different guns until I swapped out to a mini Uzi. And uh, he seemed to go down really fast. Now, I don't know whether like, having insta-kill actually helped with this, it didn't seem to do at the start, but um, I actually take him out and we complete the easter egg. Now, it's a crazy ending and I honestly thought the first time I ever saw someone, you know, like, hey, this is the ending to the easter egg, I actually thought this was fake because you just cannot, like, fathom, like, wait a minute, all this and then the ending is just like a text screen, you'll see in a second, but once we down him there, the cycle continues. But if you're after, you know, completing the Easter egg, getting your gamer score, learning about the storyline, then it's a great thing to do and I massively advise you give it a go. I've had a lot of fun on this map so far and I can't wait to keep replaying it. I hope you guys have been enjoying it as well. And if you've enjoyed this video and it's helped you out, a like rating would be hugely appreciated, guys. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to the channel because I love zombies. I cover it like crazy and uh, I make lots of videos on it. So thanks for watching and adios. Wait.